Hello and welcome to Lookie. This is the first review in the foodies movie round, so let's have a look at Mostly Martha. We meet the aforementioned Martha, who's a brilliant chef. She's the undisputed ruler of her domain, the kitchen at the Lido, a gourmet restaurant in Hamburg, Germany. Martha has an uncanny knack for creating delicious dishes, and she creates them with intelligence and precision, down to the last detail. The owner of the restaurant, despite clashing with the strong-willed chef, grudgingly respects the talents of this culinary genius and the delicacy she produces. Martha understands all the intricacies of food very well. This doesn't always apply to other things, however, like people. But when a tragedy occurs, she has to take on a new and completely foreign responsibility, not to mention a new sous chef in her kitchen, whose personality is an unexpected disruptive influence in her quiet life. The rest of the story is about these two people who throw her life totally off balance, until she establishes a new kind of equilibrium. The story is also about them, but the major part of the story is, well, mostly Martha. The rest of the discussion contain spoilers, so if you'd like to skip past the spoiler section, you can just click here. So what is it about these two people, their personalities, and their situations? And how do these unexpected factors alter Martha's life? The first is responsibility for a family member who's dealing with grief very badly in the aftermath of a tragedy. As a viewer, you're able to discern that Martha feels the loss just as keenly, but is out of her depth when trying to explain the inexplicable or trying to comfort the inconsolable. The second change is that a sous chef is hired on at the Lido. He's as expressive as she is reserved, as capricious as she she is focused. He is, in fact, her polar opposite in nearly every way except one. They both sure can cook. This turns out to be the shared interest which leads them to call a truce. Mario, the sous chef, respects Martha's ability, dedication, and talent. Martha, on the other hand, isn't quite sure what to make of this singing and dancing laid-back presence in her kitchen. I love this kitchen. I love this restaurant. I love lemons. Is that an apple? I love apples. Love them. Kiss kiss. I love everything. Moi. 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 I love this too. Moi. 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 Hello audience. Moi. What we realize over time is that each one of them has complementary strengths. Instead of battling each other, they eventually learn to work together. Moi. 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 I could die of happiness. Mm-hmm. The entire cast did well in this very low-key story, but the co-leads, Martha and Mario, are the clear standouts in the story. This is a movie where the story is told mostly through small details, in expression, body language, reaction, verbal nuances, and they made every one of those details count. The result is a very quiet but engaging character study. This isn't really a movie with a lot of big scenes. The film is more of a series of smaller scenes, illustrating how people relate to each other. Of these, the scene where Mario figures out how to make Lena, Martha's family member who's in mourning and refuses to eat, finally eat something, and the scene near the end of the film, where Martha arrives at work after a very rough emotional patch, are both of interest. The reason for this is because each scene illustrates quite well just what Mario and Martha's strengths are, and why these polar opposites actually complement each other. Martha has been trying her hardest to get Lena to eat something, anything. To accomplish this, Martha makes some of the most delicious and tempting meals she knows how to make, only for them to remain uneaten. She, Martha, tries to solve the problem with logic, and when she speaks with Lena, she's honest and uses reason. But she fails in her mission. Lena, who's in profound mourning after the death of her, Lena's mother, won't touch a thing. She's simply too emotionally numb. Mario discovers the problem and uses a very different approach. Instead of spending hours preparing the very best that a talented chef can offer, and instead of sitting down with Lena to rationally explain why she must eat something, Mario simply sits casually next to Lena on a break with a bowl of spaghetti. He enjoys the delicious spaghetti and doesn't offer her any. When he's called back by one of the kitchen staff to prepare a dish for one of the diners, he hands Lena the bowl of spaghetti in an offhand way, simply saying, be sure to leave me some. And then he leaves her there with a the bowl and goes about his business, seemingly unconcerned with whether she eats it or not. Martha walks into the kitchen and is startled to see a minor miracle. Lena cautiously nibbling at a bowl of spaghetti while Mario's back is turned. Mario's emotional savvy worked with Lena, while Martha's focused and upfront logic didn't. On the other hand, Mario is more emotionally expressive, but also gets shaken by his emotions, carried away
away by them and in a sense victimized by them. This is why the short scene late in the movie of Martha arriving at the kitchen works as a counterbalance to the scene with Mario and Lena. In this scene late in the movie, Martha is emotionally devastated. Her life is, if we're frank, spinning yet again out of control just when she'd reestablished a bit of balance. If there's anything she least wants to do that day, it's to get out of bed to show up anywhere at all, least of all the Lido. So what does she do? She gets out of bed. She shows up at the Lido takes a moment to compose herself, ties her apron on, and simply gets on with things. You see, in contrast to Mario's expressiveness, that's her strength, her stoicism, and her ability to carry on even when the world is crumbling around her. Mario, who's been just as emotionally affected, simply leaves. Whereas Martha, who's devastated, reigns in her out-of-control emotions, and calmly carries on with what needs to be done. In the end, they complement each other, like two little peas in a pot, one warm and gushy, a bit like pea soup, and one self composed like a frozen pea. Hmm. Actually, I think we could have come up with a more elegant way to say that. Too late now. That's the philosophical take on best scenes. But for pure entertainment value alone, no one is going to forget Martha's inimitable answer in the final scenes. To a finicky customer who keeps sending back his dish, complaining that the steak is not rare enough. It includes a raw steak, a tablecloth, and a glass of champagne. Did that just happen? Yes. That's what I call dinner theater. Boy, when the quiet ones go, they really go. And she went. This is a tricky category because so much of the story is told without words. Through as noted so many small details. We did find Martha's commentary on why two chefs might clash to be entertaining. Two chefs in one kitchen is like two people driving a car. And Mario's response to the owner of the Lido on why he would stay or go only on Martha's say so was interesting as well. It's your restaurant but her kitchen. Without her it's just a pile of metal. It's for her to decide. Finally, one of the final exchanges between Martha and the restaurant owner is notable because even when Martha's lost control she's still in control of herself. If you go now, says the infuriated owner, don't come back tomorrow. I know, Martha says calmly, but I have to go. Take care. Good luck. Some of the music tracks used here have a vintage feel to them and are quite charming. And we also have to mention that the scenes of Mario or Martha preparing all kinds of dishes look absolutely delicious. So that's mostly Martha. What did you think of this movie? Do you believe opposites attract? Or is that more often just a recipe for disaster? You totally said recipe. In for a frozen pea, in for a pound. Fair enough. Feel free to let us know in the comments section what some of your favorite foods are and what you thought of this movie. Coming up. We'll meet a mysterious woman in exile from her native country country, who repays the kindness of two sisters with an unexpected and extravagant gift of devotion. Feel free to join us in the next episode for Babette's Feast. See you there!